Good afternoon. This is Brother Ray Branch, Associate Pastor of Central Baptist Church of Mountain City, Tennessee, coming to you on this fine Wednesday afternoon. We hope that the broadcast today finds you doing happy and well in the Lord. We hope that the Lord is blessing you richly during these somewhat troublesome times. And we thank God, though, that he said that he'd never leave us nor forsake us and that he'd always be there with us. Before we go any further, we feel it needful to go to the Lord in prayer, ask his blessings on the broadcast today. But then also we want to pray for you and we hope that you'll pray for us. I know that uh, there may be someone out there today that's going through a very difficult storm in their life, circumstances, and we just want to pray that God's blessings be upon you and that he give you his peace. You know, he never said he would spare us from the storms of life. As a matter of fact, he told us just the opposite. He told us that we would uh, suffer troublesome times uh, in our Christian life. But he also told us that he'd be there with us. He'd never leave us nor forsake us. And I take comfort in that and thank the Lord for that. So at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do want to thank you today for the privilege and for the opportunity to come uh, by way of video to others. God, we thank you, Lord God, that you uh, bless us the way that you do. Lord, we just want to glorify and uplift your name, not because necessarily of what you do for us, although you do so much for us. And we know, that as the scripture says, all good things come from heaven. But Lord, we want to praise you and glorify you, uplift your name today simply because of who you are and that you are worthy. And Lord, we just ask you today, Lord, that you bless this broadcast as it goes out. May the power and the unction of the Holy Spirit of God go along with it. Lord, also we want to pray your special blessings upon those who are watching today. Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you would touch them in a special way. Lord, they may be going through a, a storm, a trial, uh, a difficult situation in their life where circumstances are beyond their control. And Lord, we just want to pray that you would touch them. And Lord, make your presence known to them. Make your presence real in their lives. Lord, we know that your word said that you'd never leave us nor forsake us. We know that you're always there with us. But Lord, sometimes it seems I... The circumstances are so big, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that you would help us to see that you're there with us and we can take comfort in that. Lord, bless as only you can today. And God, meet the needs of your children as only you can according to your riches and glory, but most of all, according to your will. Bless now as only you can and will not fail to give you the glory, honor, and praise for it. In Christ Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. What we want to look at today and try to be a help and a blessing to you uh, is John chapter number 21. John chapter number 21. Now, there's no one particular verse that we want to look at in this chapter. We want to look at the entire chapter as a whole. So for that reason, we're not going to read all 22 verses uh, today for the sake of time. But we'll go over different verses as we go along. We give our different points uh, today. But we want to thank on this thought a recommitment to the Lord. A recommitment to to the Lord. Now you may be out there today and maybe your love has grown cold towards the things of God. And I'm not saying that you've lost your salvation. That's a completely different uh, message or lesson in itself. Uh, I believe that the Word of God teaches us that once we're saved, that we're saved uh, for eternity. There's nothing that can change that. The Bible tells us it encourages us uh, to know that we're saved by the grace of God. The Bible says these things are written that you may know that you've passed from death unto life. As a matter of fact, that's one of the essential steps in a happy, successful Christian life is that you know that you're saved, that you have the assurance of your salvation. And baptism, baptism is important to a child of God. The Lord's Supper is important as a child of God. Church membership, all these things are essential to being a happy, successful Christian but if you don't have the assurance of your salvation, uh, that makes for a miserable, miserable life. And so I'm not talking about that, but I am saying that once you are saved by the grace of God, there are times that our fellowship, not our relationship, once you're saved and you're a child of God, that relationship will never be changed. But our fellowship uh, is oftentimes changed. And we can grow cold on the Lord uh, we can drift uh, away from God's will in our lives. And maybe you're out there today, and I don't know your heart. I don't know who's watching. But I will say this, that heart, very seldom, very seldom 
are we exactly where we need to be with God? We, we drift away from God, and it's very easy to do so. We're living in this sinful world. We're living in this old sinful flesh, and it's very easy to, uh, to fall away from the Lord. And I'm not talking about losing your salvation. I'm talking about falling away in that fellowship. And a good example of that is Peter. Peter, uh, of course, is the one who knew who the Lord Jesus Christ was. We know that in Matthew, uh, he told the Lord when the Lord said, Who do men say that I am? And it was Peter who spoke up and said, you are, You're the Son of God. And, of course, Jesus told him that flesh and blood has not revealed that to him. So that puts him uh, in a very special place. He was one of the three of what we call the inner circle of Jesus, along with James and John. He was on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. Uh, he was one of the three that went a little further in the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus to pray with him. And he had a very special place. He had a zeal for the Lord. And, of course, he's the one that drew his sword. He's the one who... Uh, cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest in the garden. He was ready to offend Jesus with his life. But unfortunately, he was also the one who did exactly what Jesus said he would do. He denied the Lord three different times as Jesus was on trial. And because of that, it broke his heart when he realized what he did. The Bible says when the cock crew that he realized what he had done, he wept. And because of that, he was so discouraged and so distraught that he was simply going to go uh, and maybe even thought about, you know what, what's the use and just giving up. Maybe you're out there today and your fellowship has grown so cold. Maybe you're to the place where you're so discouraged that you just feel like giving up, that you just feel like quitting. In John chapter number 21, we find that Peter said, I go a fishing. And I'm not just, I don't think that he was talking about just simply taking a little fishing trip. I believe that Peter was thinking, you know what, I'm done with this being a fisherman of men. I'm going back to doing what I know what to do, and that's fishing for fish. And of course, the Bible says in John uh, 21 here that he and many of the other disciples, as a matter of fact, it's the disciples who were fishermen. It said that him and Thomas and Nathaniel and James and John, these are all men uh, that were fishermen. And these were men that knew about fishermen. And uh, it said two other disciples, probably Andrew, uh, Peter's brother, they were fishing and the Bible said they toiled all night. But in this chapter, it tells us how Jesus come to Peter and he gives Peter the opportunity to make peace with him. And Peter needs special encouragement after his denial of Christ. And this chapter is really divided into two sections. The first 14 verses, it sets the scene for Jesus' conversation with Peter. And then verses 15 to 22 gives us the, the scene there on the, uh, the sand or the beach where Jesus uh, gives Peter the opportunity to recommit himself to his service. And this demonstrates how the Lord wants to use us if we are willing to dedicate ourselves to his will and to his work. And many of us start out like Peter. We have such a zeal and we have such an excitement and so much ambition. I remember when I first uh, received Jesus Christ as my Savior as a teenager, and boy, I, I couldn't read enough of, a, of the Bible. I couldn't attend church enough. Uh, there, there's a fire and there's a zeal about you. And over time, if you're not careful, though, that, that fire begins to die down. And we begin to lose a little bit of that zeal. Our attention begins to turn away from the work of the Lord. And we start neglecting that fellowship that we have. And believe me, to have a close fellowship with the Lord, it takes work. We need to stay in the Word of God. We need to stay humble. We have to stay in prayer. We need to stay about the Father's business. And we can become so cumbered with the cares of this life. And it's not bad things, but it's simply things that if we're not careful can take our attention off of that work. And... You know, we want to, when we first get saved, we want to serve the Lord better and we want to do more than anyone else. And, you know, that's the way Peter was for such a long time until he had a disappointing time in his life and it really 
caused them to have this setback. And, you know, somewhere along the way, something happens in our Christian life that affects our service to the Lord. You may be out there today, and maybe something has affected your service for God. Maybe you're not as, uh, you're not as zealous. Maybe you're not as on fire as you once were, and you just simply need to have a recommitment to the Lord and recommit yourself to His uh, service. And that's what we want to look at today. We want to look at Peter and look at how Christ opened his arms and helped Peter to see that he needed to recommit his life. So as we are just like Peter, you know, he wants to give us the opportunity to recommit to him, to rededicate, to reaffirm our service to him. And I want you to notice the steps in which the Lord uses to reach out to Peter. So first of all, there must be a self-examination. A self-examination. Here at Peter and the other disciples are, and the Bible says they've toiled all night long fishing and they've caught nothing. And these are experienced fishermen. These are men that know what they are doing. They made their living at fishing. So it wasn't just that they weren't having any luck. It wasn't that there wasn't any fish in this body of water. It's just that they hadn't caught anything. And as Jesus comes, it says he steps out on the shore, and they're out there on the water. And you can imagine this scene. And in verse number 5, the Bible says, Then Jesus saith unto him, Children, have you any meat? And they answered him, No. He forced them to take a look at the situation and examine the results of their efforts. Have you any meat? Did you catch anything? Are you having any luck? And they said, No. If there's one thing that the Lord wants us to do in our life, and by the way, we don't do enough of it, it's to examine ourselves. And we often need to examine ourselves, everyone, including myself. It don't matter if you're a preacher. It don't matter if you're a, 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 a deacon, a Sunday school teacher. You sing in the choir. You're just sitting out on the pews. It, it does not matter. The Lord often wants us to examine ourselves where we are at in the faith and where our relationship and our fellowship is with the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter had given up after his denial, and I believe he had all intentions of taking up the fishing business again. He said, you know what? Uh, this has just not worked out. Uh, this fisherman of men, I'm not good at it. I've denied the Lord. He was crushed. He was discouraged. He said, I'm going back to fishing. But after toiling all night long, the Bible says, the disciples caught nothing. And we will never be effective without the Lord in our lives. And you may have some success, but you'll never be what you could be without the Lord. He brings this to their attention. Now, where are our efforts getting us today? That's, that's a question where you need to ask. Where are your efforts getting you today? Without the Lord, or not as close to the Lord, where's that effort getting you? What are we accomplishing today for the Lord Jesus Christ? And the only way to know that is to examine ourselves. And many times in the Scripture, the Bible tells us that we are to examine ourselves. Psalms 139.23 says, Search me, O God, know my heart, try me, know my thoughts. David here was saying in this psalm, he wanted to be searched of God. He, want, he said, I want you to search me. I want you to try me. I want you to know my heart. I want you to search my thoughts. He said, I want you to look over me, and I want you to examine me. Also, Psalm 26, 2 says, Examine me, O Lord, prove me, try my reins and my heart. And of course, one of the most famous uh, verses that we find in the Scripture talking about searching ourselves is in 2 Corinthians 13, verse number 5, where the Bible says, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not that your no." Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except ye be reprobates. Now this particular verse is saying you need to examine yourselves to see if you even are in the faith. But I believe we also need to examine ourselves to see where we are in our faith. We need to examine ourselves. Just as Jesus said, hey children, have you any meat? How are you doing? And they were forced to say, we're not doing any good at all. We've not called a thing. You know, there's been times in my life where I've just had to take a good long look to see where I'm at 
And maybe I've not been as close to God as I should be. My fellowship's not been what it should be. My service has not been what it should be. And I've had to look and say, you know what? I'm not yielding the fruits that I'd like to. I'm not doing as well as I should be because my fellowship with Christ is not what it should be. God help us to take a good long look. The reason we haven't realized that our love has grown cold is because we don't stop to examine ourselves. We must take inventory. So the first step in recommitting yourself to the Lord is just simply self-examination. We need to see where we stand. But then the second step is we need to, sometimes we, need, we have to separate ourselves from others. Separate ourselves from others. Verse number seven says, Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved, and of course we know that is John, saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that, it was the Lord. The Bible says he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and he cast himself into the sea. So as soon as Peter heard that it was the Lord, because they didn't recognize him at first, but John, that disciple whom Jesus loved, recognized that it was the Lord. He looked at Peter and said, it's the Lord, it's Jesus. When Peter heard this, the Bible says that he he was naked, so the Bible says he girded the fisherman's coat, he wrapped it around, and he jumped out of the boat and swam towards Jesus. He separated him. He didn't wait on the others. He separated himself immediately, and he wanted to get back to where he needed to be with the Lord. As soon as Peter recognized the Lord, he didn't wait for the others. He didn't waste any time. He instantly wanted to get to him. We have got to get to the Lord and place ourselves in the middle of his will, no matter what others are doing around us. It didn't matter to him if the others were going to come or not. Of course they did come, but he wasn't going to wait on them. He jumped right in. He wanted to get back to where he needed to be. God help us to have that same desire in our lives when we see that we are lacking, when we see that we're not where we should be. God help us to have that zeal to get back to where we once were, to get back in that fellowship, to get back to where we need to be with the Lord. And you know, Luke 14, 26 says, If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and his wife and his children, his brethren and his sisters, yea, in his own life also he cannot be my disciple. Now this verse doesn't mean that we have to hate our mom or our dad, our brother or our sister or our, uh, even our own lives. That's not what this verse is, means. What it means is when you compare your love to Christ, to your love for others, your love for Christ should so far exceed your love for others that it would seem as though you hate them. That's what that verse means. We should put God first in everything. No matter what others are saying, no matter what others are doing, we should serve and we should love Christ more than anybody else. Many today are waiting for someone else to serve the Lord when they should stop using others as an excuse and, or letting others influence our service for the Lord. And, you know, we see so many times that we allow our family, we allow our spouse, we allow our parents, we allow our children, we allow our work, we allow others to dictate our service for the Lord. And it should not be that way. We say things like, well, if so-and-so would do, if my husband, if my wife, you know, if my parents, if my children, if, 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 if this person would do this, then I would stop letting others dictate your service to God. Stop letting others dictate your love for the Lord. No matter what others do, you have to answer for yourself and you should, if you have to, separate yourself from them and, and just simply get to where you need to be with the Lord. So many times in service, uh, you know, we'll see someone come to the altar only after someone else has. God help us to have enough boldness and God help us to have enough knowledge to know we just simply need to get back to God. Sometimes if you're going to recommit yourself to the Lord, you're going to have to separate yourself from others. Is there someone holding you back? Is there someone that is dictating your service for the Lord? It should not be that way. As a matter of fact, maybe you're the one who is dictating someone else's service. 
Maybe you're the one that if you would get right with God, if you were to get back to where you need to be with the Lord, maybe someone else is waiting on you. But we, if you have to, separate yourself from others. Number three, there's going to be sacrifice. If you're going to recommit yourself to the Lord, there must be sacrifice. In verse number 15, the Bible says, So when they had dined, after they got done eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Now there is so much in this verse. Lovest thou me more than these? Now many interpret this very differently. And, uh, you know, this is not the place nor the time to uh, go back and forth on this. Some have interpreted as Peter loving Christ more than, than fishing. Do you love me more than fishing? Do you love me more than the fish? Do you love me even more than these other disciples? Lovest thou me more than these? Do you love me more than you love these other disciples? Maybe he was saying, lovest thou me more than these? Do you love me more than they love me? There, there's different ways that we can interpret this, and we all have our different opinions on this. But the fact of the matter is, we can all agree on this. The Lord was asking him if he loved him more than he did something else. Do you love me more than anything else? And we know that, you know, the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The Lord we act as though, so many times we act as though if we live for the Lord, then we have to give up everything else. That's not what God is saying at all. Now, there are times in our lives, if you're going to serve the Lord, there are some things that you have to give up. But that's not the case all the time. The Bible tells us if we'll seek God first and we'll put God first, and that's what he wants. God wants to be number one in our lives. And I will say this, God deserves to be number one in our lives. He give his all for us. He give his best for us. We should be giving our best to him. But I found that so many times that there's we don't have to give up as much as we think we have to give up. We need to put God first, and he promised us if we'll seek him first, seek the kingdom of God, seek his righteousness, then he said, I will add these other things unto you. He said, I will make sure that you're taken care of. I will make sure that you enjoy. You know what? I enjoy my Christian life. I love my life. And I'm saved. I, I'm on my way to heaven. And yet I get to enjoy life. So many people act like, you know what, if you're a Christian, you, you have to live this dull, boring life. You can't do anything. You don't have any liberty. But the Bible says, the sun shall set you free. I, I'm, I'm going to heaven and I'm loving my life. So many times we put restrictions on our own lives and we make our own lives miserable, but that's not what God wants. God wants us to enjoy life. He said, I want to be first in your life, and if you'll make me first in your life and you will serve me, then all these other things will be added unto you as well. We must be willing to put Christ first in every area of our life. If we'll seek his good will first, then he will add all the other things and desires we may have. Think about Solomon. God asked Solomon, he said, anything that you want, I'll give it to you. Just name it. He could have asked for riches. He could have asked for, uh, you know, victory. He could have asked for all these other things. But he asked for wisdom. He asked for that thing that would be pleasing to God. And because he did that, the Bible says, God said, because you've chosen that, I'll give you all the other things. And of course, we know that Solomon was the richest man that ever lived. He had 40 years. He never fought not one battle, not like his father David or kings after him. He had 40 years of peace and prosperity for the land of Israel. He was the richest man. He had all these things. God added unto him all those other things because he sought him first. And in our Christian lives, we'll find so many times God will do the same thing for us. God has blessed many areas of our lives, and He and we have given him nothing in return. That's not the way it should be. There's going to be sacrifice if we want to have a recommitment to the Lord that involves sacrifice. And then the fourth thing is we need to set our eyes. We need to set our eyes on Jesus if we're going to recommit to him. In verse number 22, the Bible says, Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry 
Till I come, what is it to thee? Follow thou me. Now, we must keep our eyes on Jesus. Jesus told Peter not to get his eyes on John. As Here, here Peter is and he, Jesus, and they're walking along, and old John, he's not far behind. He's, he's kind of following along behind them. And he's asking Peter, you know, lovest thou me? Then feed my sheep. Lovest thou me? Feed my sheep. Lovest thou me? And he keeps asking his ease. And this is what Peter says. He looks back and he sees John. And he says, well, what about old John? And that's when Jesus told him, he said, you know, what if, what if John lives until I come back? Don't you worry about that. In other words, you need to mind your own business, Peter, and just keep your eyes on me. Don't worry about anybody else. You know what? We're guilty of setting our eyes on others at different times and comparing ourselves to others, worrying about others when we just simply need to worry about ourselves and keep our eyes on the most important thing, which is Jesus. If you compare yourselves to others, you're, you're, most of the time you're going to come out ahead. Or you'll be discouraged and, and come out behind them. But we're not to compare ourselves to others. We're simply to keep our eyes on Jesus, compare ourselves to Jesus, and we'll find that He is the goal. He's what we should be following. He is our example. And I thank God for that. He proves as our ultimate example. He proves as the only un unchanging example. And he commands us to do that, to keep our eyes on him. So we need to recommit ourselves to the Lord. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's many times in my life that I have to recommit myself to the Lord and my service to the Lord. I'm sure there's going to be more times I'm going to have to recommit because we get beat down. We get discouraged and we fall behind in our service for the Lord. And there's times, many times over again, we have to recommit ourselves to the Lord. Yes, He is our Savior and that's not going to change, but is He your Master? Is He your Lord? So many times we fail in that area of our Christian lives and we need to recommit ourselves to Him. So if we're going to recommit ourselves to Him, we find that there must be a self-examination. We find that there must be separation from others. We find that there must be a sacrifice and we find that there's a setting of our eyes upon Him if we're going to recommit ourselves to the Lord. Where do you stand today in your walk with the Lord? Where do you stand in your fellowship with God? Are you where you need to be? Many times we're not. But thank God it's easy to get right back up to where we should be. God desires that for us. Jesus wants to have close fellowship, but it's ultimately up to you how close you live and how close you are to the Lord. Do you need to recommit yourself to the Lord today? If so, he's waiting there for you, and we just need to do these things. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you, and we want to praise you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Father, we thank you for the time you've given us today. And God, I just ask you now, Lord, that you would bless as only you can. God, I pray that you would help us to examine ourselves. God, I pray if we need to, we'd separate ourselves Lord, I know that there's going to be sacrifice, and Lord, we need to set our eyes and keep our eyes upon you. Father, I pray today that you would bless in a special way those who are watching, God, those who are listening. Father, I pray today that you would help us to all take a good long look at our lives, and if we find any area of our Christian life lacking, Father, I pray that you would help us to get back to where we need to be with you. God, if we need to, help us to recommit ourselves as servants to you. Lord, I ask you today, Lord, that you would bless as only you can. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. And God, I pray that we would not only be hearers of the word, but we'd be doers of the word. Bless now as only you can, and we'll thank you and praise you for all you do. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, there's the broadcast for the day. We hope it's been a blessing to you. If you're uh, if you're in the surrounding area here in Mount C, Tennessee, and you're looking for a church home or you'd like to visit with us, we'd love to have you come and be with us. Uh, right now, we're meeting on Sundays at 11 o'clock for service, and then in the afternoons at 6 o'clock as well. And we would love to have you come and visit with us. And I guarantee you will receive a warm welcome from the folks there at the Central Baptist Church. And... Uh, if you're a member of Central Baptist Church, we'll be looking forward to seeing you this coming Lord's Day. And until then, and until next broadcast time, this is Brother Ray Branch saying God bless you is our prayer.